What's up, everyone? Welcome into another Case by Case with Peter Tragos. We are live here now, ready to talk more Sonny Balwani, the dropout, the series, and of course, Will Smith, as more things are happening in that case. And it's very interesting um, to me. There are some new legal aspects coming in the Will Smith case. There are some conspiracy theories that cross over the legal realm and what's happening in the legal world and how that can give us an indication as to what's really going on. So we'll break that down um, in today's video, as well as Sunny Balwani. Pete is going to join me any second now to dive into week two of the Sunny Balwani trial and an update on the dropout series, what we think is going to be coming there and how it could affect that trial. Um, but happy Friday, everyone. We're here. We've made it to the end of the week. We are almost to 30,000 subscribers, which is really fun. So if you're not a subscriber, go hit the subscribe button. Um, help us get to 30,000. Um, and as always, if you enjoy the lives, like the video. As we go through each case, we are going to talk um, first about Sonny Balwani and the dropout. Then we're going to answer a bunch of questions. We'll do that segment first. And then we're going to do the Will Smith segment second, where we talk through what's going on with Will Smith. We answer questions at the end as usual. Thank you, Helen, um, for the compliment on the uplighting. As you can see, we're here in our little live set that we do. I still have the couch over there to do the recorded episodes, um, but this is kind of just a fun little different setup uh, for the lives. So when Pete gets here, what we're going to talk about is he's do he has already done an in-depth week two recap of the Sunny Ball Winning Trial. So that's going to be dropping tomorrow. And that's going to go in depth into all of the witnesses that have been called into the motions that have been filed. Because one of the really interesting things I want to talk about with him today is the indication that there may be a Brady violation and what that is and how that can affect the case and whether or not it'll make the case get dismissed. Um, but, you know, so it's going to be a really interesting topic as we jump through that Sonny Balwani trial, whenever he gets here. Um, but we're going to go into a little bit, um, less deep and answer more questions because a lot of you watch the ones that he records, but you ask for him to come on the live stream. So I've tried to get him on more of the live videos, especially on Friday, so that we can answer questions on the Sonny Balwani case because he really goes deeper into every single week, breaking it down in the videos that he records. Um, but for the lives, we'll give kind of that brief overview. I'll ask him some questions. He'll have some answers. But really, the point of bringing him on here is so that he can answer your questions. Um and I see some people commenting on, yes, the case-by-case -case merch. This is uh, the design that was done by one of our uh, subscribers. And it is on our merch website. Go check it out. Um, Brandon Good, who said, you love the sweatshirt. We'll have to pick one up. Definitely, they're available. We'll put the merch link in the live chat, as we always do. Um, so make sure you go check that out if you guys want to. We've got T-shirts, tank tops, um, sweatshirts. And the material is really nice. Like I said last time, it's like a nicer sweatshirt. Um, they do run small. I would say this is a large and I'm not a huge guy. And the t-shirt that I got, I got a lawyer, you know, t-shirt and I got a large and it's a little snug and I haven't just been beefing it up at the gym. I think it's just actually running a little bit small. So we'll have to see after I wash and dry it, how it fits. Um, but so yeah, I would say things run a little bit smaller. So if you're not sure of your size, go a size up. We've got people from Minnesota in here, multiple people from Minnesota, Lots of people from Minnesota. Yeah. Um, we've got people from St. Louis. We've got people from Texas all over the place coming in to join us. So appreciate everyone being here. Pete has just gotten here. So we are going to jump into uh, Sonny Balwani, the dropout, the trial, what's going on. I mentioned that tomorrow your more in-depth video will drop. But for today, mm -hmm. give us kind of a brief overview of what's going on in the trial, what's happened week two, the highlights. All right. The basic highlights are these. Uh, there have been two witnesses that have taken the stand, both of which are former lab directors. One is Erica Chung, who was the whistleblower. So she had a couple of days of testimony. Uh, they put on Mark, and then Mark's last name is uh, Pandori. He also was a former lab director. You better not get it wrong because they love to get I, you. It's okay. Phone. I mean, people love. If there's a name that's misstated or pronounced incorrectly, yeah. people love to get in the comments about it. Yeah. Sorry, go so ahead. So be it. Ahead. So Mark Pandora is, is already testifying, and he's talking about how it was a train wreck. Like 50% of the test results were just wrong uh, right off the bat. So that's what's happening so far. 
the big deal, and I did cover it in more detail in the video that we did on the Sonny Balwani trial, is there was a motion dismissed by the defense because they're alleging a discovery violation that the prosecutor was aware of some exculpatory evidence but did not turn it over to, uh, to the defense. And what that means is that there's potentially evidence that could free Sonny Balwani mm -hmm. and make him win, and they should potentially have dropped the charges. That's what it means when you... Um, withhold this evidence and it's a pretty big violation here we call it yeah. a Brady violation here right. and it doesn't happen often but it has happened in some of our cases and so how does that process go how do you start saying that the prosecutor has done this violation that they do have this exculpatory evidence that they're not turning over how does the process work what winds up happening is a defense follows a motion advising the court that they have identified something that they believe is a violation of Brady versus Maryland which is the case that we're talking about once that happens, the court has to have a hearing to determine what the prosecution has or has possession of or may know about to make a decision about whether or not it is exculpatory material that should have been turned over. In this particular case, I don't want to spoil the stuff that we did on the uh, on the Balwani video, but the court actually shut the courtroom down and did this in camera because apparently the evidence that they're talking about is was something that was seized from a potential other co-defendant that is yet to be indicted. So, yeah, that, that's not as unusual in federal court to have stuff done in camera or in secret so the public can't see, as you guys already know, with no cameras in the courtroom. So while this happens, though, you can't just say it. There has to be real mm -hmm. evidence that you think exists as a defense attorney that the state is withholding or the government is withholding. And it has to be not just any evidence, but evidence that could free your client. Absolutely. And because... And it's different in federal court. The discovery is not as broad as especially in state court in Florida, what they have to give us. So they don't really have to give us everything in federal court. They hold all the cards, they being the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. But when we find out there is something that could change the case for our client and benefit our client in this way, this is a huge violation. And many times if you win this Brady violation, your client can go home free. Absolutely. And again, not to spoil it, but this very well may have huge implications on Elizabeth Holmes, too. They may be talking about setting aside her convictions if this is, in fact, true. Right. So that could be huge. That could yeah. be huge. Um, so generally speaking, we've, we've, you've mentioned some of the testimony that's taken place. Has anything happened that is a positive for Sonny Balwani through two weeks of trial? Other than the filing of the motion? No. The truth of the matter is I think the, def the government has done a good job of fine-tuning the evidence that they presented against Elizabeth Holmes, and it's coming out much cleaner against Sonny Balwani. And one of the big things that slapped him in the face, the exact opposite of what you're asking me is, when Erica Chung took the stand, she was in tears because she was kind of recanting to the jury or reciting to the jury when she got walked out from the building how Balwani was just angry and just belittling her. So they're doing a good job of just really making it. Well, they had a practice out. run. So now they sure. get to do it again, basically. That's that's the negative of going second. Right. Um, you do see what happens. So if Elizabeth Holmes would have won, he would have been more confident going into it. But you saw her lose. And now they get a second time yeah. to present this evidence a little clear. Um, so when we talk about uh, this trial and as it continues, do we know how long it's going to be? Uh, 13 weeks is what it's slated for, which is the exact same amount of time that Elizabeth Holmes was saying. Okay, so we're very early on in the early stages, 10, 20% into the trial. So we're early, but it could be over before it starts, basically, with this Brady sure. violation. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Next, to transition to kind of the dropout. As it's progressing, how is Sonny Balwani coming off? Is he looking better? Is he looking worse? How could it affect his trial? Because, I mean, it's not unheard of. Okay, we hope this isn't happening. But it really is not an impossibility that one of his jurors could literally be watching the dropout as his trial is going on, watching it at night. Right. We hope they're not, but they're human. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things like this happen and they're the curiosity kills the cat. And sometimes they get curious enough to where they just watch it. So is anything happening in that if a juror were to be watching that could, that could make him look bad? From a drama perspective, Sonny Balwani's character is developing to be more of a leader, more of an aggressive personality. Uh, anyway, if you watch the show, you'll see that he's actually becoming more profane, more uh, more integral in the decision making of let's sue those guys. Let's bury him in paper. Those kinds of comments. Now, are they true? I don't know if they're, they're specifically true, but it would definitely taint my opinion of the, the real person to watch the drama play out. And as they continue, do you think, based on what's happened so far in the show, that Elizabeth Holmes's criminal trial is going to be part of the dropout series? I don't think that the criminal trial is going to be part of this 
series of episodes. Okay. I think they're going to do another season. Season though. two, and that'll I be the criminal will. trial. I mean, they've got to have tons of drama from the criminal trial, how the media has interacted with yeah. it, how everybody's talking about it, how she got some not guilties, right. which will be interesting too, and I'm sure they can get some Hollywood drama about it. And but, the key is if they don't do a second season, I'm, they have enough material now, and if they're currently filming, they can you know catch up on some of these episodes. Right. And then again, if they do a second season, potentially Sonny Balwani's trial mm-hmm. could be part of it because it may be over by the time the second season is done or at least being finished filming. Right. So that's our general highlights of what happened week two and of the dropout. Um, we're going to jump into the chat now for some questions. If you have any questions for Pete, get them in now. I see kind of a personal question we'll start with. But if you have any Elizabeth Holmes, Sonny Balwani or questions for Pete, get them in now because we're going to run through them before we kind of transition to the Will Smith story. Um, we've got a lot of people in here all over. I saw one from Norway, one from Scotland. I love Scotland. I'll be there this summer. I love Scotland for the golf. Only been there once. Probably will never go back. Um, Norway, California, Detroit. I'll be in Norway. There's Pete's Ben in Detroit. Yeah, I'm <laughs> almost from Detroit. <laughs> Colorado, Pennsylvania. What's up, Pete? What's up, Ryan? Scotland, Texas. Very cool. All right. Ryan has a question for Pete. By the way, I don't know if you guys do this on purpose or picked up on it. Usually how we differentiate is he's Pete, I'm Peter. So we're going to address these to Pete, which I think I've already answered this question a million times. So Pete, what did you major in for your undergrad? My undergraduate is in finance. Okay. And because it's in finance, explain a little bit about how that made your decisions in law school a little bit different than mine. What did you do in law school and how did that affect it? All right. My undergrad was in finance. I actually did the joint MBA JD program. So I have a master's degree in in finance with my law degree because my thought was that I was going to go out there and do business litigation, commercial transactions. Corporate work. Yeah. But that all went away the first time I walked into a court and we're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah. But it's still a cool thing to do. And we did a whole podcast for like an hour breaking down the difference between the MBA JD program. A ton of people have emailed in and asked us questions from that podcast where we kind of compare and contrast our two experiences. Pete also kind of transferred down here from Toledo during law school and a ton of people transfer in law school. So we talk a little bit about that. So anybody that's interested in law school, or interested in that, check out, I, I can't remember if we did a video on it. I think we did a YouTube video and a podcast on that where we compare and contrast the MBA JD program, whether or not it's worth it with just the JD program. So if you have more questions about that, they're all answered on that episode. All right. Yeah. Mr. Turn up the party. He hope he's here to see the day that there are cameras allowed in the federal courtrooms. I can answer. I wonder why it is. I will always wonder why it isn't. I know why. The reason there are no cameras in the federal courthouse is the federal government's very close to the vest. And the only record that exists is the record of the court reporter actually transcribing the proceedings. There is no other recording. There is no way to challenge anything going on but for that one record. And that's why they do it. We got British Columbia, Canada. That's cool. Switzerland, the UK. Oh, Ryan is a finance major right now. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Betty Smith, Peter or Peter, do you think Sonny will get off or be convicted on something? I think he's screwed. I think he's going to eat the exact same convictions that Elizabeth Holmes did. I think he's going to be found guilty for uh, lying to the investors. I think he's probably going to be not guilty for lying to the patients and the doctors. And then there's going to be some questions about the conspiracy, but I think he's going to wind up getting a conviction. Yeah, I think he's going to be in the similar boat to Elizabeth Holmes. And again, when we prognosticate these things, we're not geniuses reading the tea leaves. This is just how it usually happens. Yeah. And an indication of what's going to happen in the future is what's going to happen, what has already happened in the past. And as we've talked a lot about federal criminal cases, the conviction rate is so high. You know, if you're ever a betting man or woman, you are going to bet for a conviction in a federal case like this. Yep. Ryan, good. Um, here it is right here. Can I show my own comment? Yeah, perfect. Is NBA JD worth it? So here is the YouTube video. It's in the chat for anybody that wants to do that or check that out. Emily from Virginia. Scott living in South Africa. That's wow. interesting. Um, all right, let's see here. Betty Smith, Peter, Peter, what number of years do you think Elizabeth Holmes will get? When will we, when will we know on Elizabeth? All right. At this point, Elizabeth Holmes sentencing is scheduled for September. Um, I did a video on the sentencing guidelines on Elizabeth Holmes. You can go take a look at that. It's one of the Elizabeth Holmes uh, series. And she scores pretty much off the chart based on what uh, what the conviction is and the amount of money involved in this loss. 
So I think she's going to wind up getting a downward departure, but she's going to eat a bunch of years. My gut says she's probably going to be in that 10 year range. She scores, like I said, off the charts. Do you think Sony Bawani will get more or less than Elizabeth Holmer the same? I think he'll get the same. Um, if he doesn't get the same, my perception is that he is less I agree. culpable. I would think she would get more. Yeah. Based on my understanding of the situation, I would think she would get more and he would yeah, get less. One of the difference is he was a guy that's been in business for 20 years before she was even part of Theranos. So it's, there's a lot of you should have known better. Yeah, I was going to say that that'll cut against him. But I think generally, especially with this situation and it being her company, I would think she would get more, but there's no guarantees yeah. of that. It's going to be bad for them regardless, I think. Would it? Butterfly. So we have not followed the Husel case. I know generally what it's about is about the doctor that basically yeah. was giving his patient things that were killing them. Um, what is the outcome? Let us know the outcome. I would guess guilty. I'm not sure, but I would guess guilty based on the nurse um, that was convicted for, I don't know if you'll call it something similar, but her medical treatment ending up in death. And she was convicted, but I don't know what happened to Dr. Husel. So let me know the outcome. Once you know the outcome, we can give you our guesses or our, our reactions to it. But I haven't watched a ton of that trial. I've seen one or two small snippets. Have you followed anything? About I haven't it? followed it just by other than seeing what's in the news. Okay. So let us know what that outcome is. And then maybe we'll have a reaction to it. Hello, Karen. All right. So we are, we are through all of the questions for Theranos and Sonny. So this is your last chance to get them in or let us know what that Husel outcome is before Pete heads out and we transition to the next thing. So as we said, tomorrow morning, I believe, which we don't post a ton of videos on Saturday, so that's going to be fun. It's kind of going to be a test for us. So check it out on Saturday. Make sure you hit the bell on the video and subscribe to our page. Um, yeah, that's what I thought too, Brandon. But So hit the bell on our page if you subscribe so you get the alerts because we're going to do some testing on maybe some weekend videos. This is going to be one of the testers is now that week two is finished, that video has been recorded and we're going to post that Sunny Balwani video on Saturday. So make sure you check it out. And if it's some unusual times, that bell will let you know when the video is going to start. Um, they say that he did that doesn't mean he did it, right? Oh, for sure. All right, Brandon Good, I think closing arguments are Monday. Yeah, I didn't see, I haven't seen anything about there being an outcome yet. So we'll, we'll react to it when it happens potentially. Um, last question for Pete. I've seen the emails of Sonny bullying lab guys into submission. Are there any from Lizzie doing the same? That's a great question. I believe that people testified in in her trial that she was she would basically tell them this is how it's going to be. I'm in charge. Go do it or don't talk about this. Do talk about that. So yes, I would suggest to you that there is testimony that uh, that Elizabeth Holmes was bullying people. All right, this will be the last question, Ryan. Pete, do you think Sonny has a better chance at a not guilty verdict compared to Elizabeth, or do you think it's literally the same? You know, okay. I think that he has a better chance at a not guilty than she does simply because she's been convicted and he can always point at her and saying she was CEO. And by the time I came on board to this company, all this stuff I didn't know about. But at the end of the day, I'm thinking he's going to have a hard time being a guy that's been in business that has opened, you know, multi-million dollar startups that, you know, has some sort of understanding of what's going on. When he starts screaming and yelling at people to, you know, not talk about the fact the machine doesn't work, that's going to bite real hard. Yeah, I agree. All right. Thanks, Pete, right. for joining us. Um, he's going to take off now, and we're going to transition into uh, the Will Smith story. Right. So, yeah, Y'all have fun. Appreciate it. All right. So that's it for Sonny Balwani. That's it for Theranos now. Don't ask any questions because I won't be able to answer them without him here. If you have them, check out the video on Saturday. He'll uh, be able to answer some that you have in the comments, um, and we'll deal with it there. Um, all right. So now is the time that we're going to talk about what's going on with Will Smith. Um, so Michael Palmer just threw this question out that I want to get to before we talk about Will Smith. Aloha, Sammy. Uh, Hawaii is one of my favorite places in the world. It's where I honeymooned. Okay. Michael Palmer. Pete, did you read the jury instructions in the Maxwell trial by chance? It's messed up. The charges don't even match the statutes. Venue doesn't apply. Serious issues. So no, I did not read those. I have not compared those. But I have a funny story. My dad had a criminal trial here in the Middle District in Tampa. And they went to trial and lost. And on appeal, the statute that, they were, that the client was charged with 
sorry, the charging document that the client and the words that were read to the jury and jury instructions and the actual statute of the charge, the crime charge did not match the words of the updated statute. And so my dad appealed the case. He did the appeal for the case, the trial that he lost, won the appeal, and they got another trial because of it. So if this is true, this could absolutely be a reason Glenn Maxwell gets a new trial. This is one of the big ticket items because as criminal defendants, you have to know what you're charged with. It has to match the right statute. The jury has to convict you of the right statute. Venue not applying, obviously, as a free ticket for a new trial or for the charges to get dismissed if venue really doesn't apply. So I have not seen that, but that is very, very interesting, Michael. As usual, Michael Palmer, with bringing some good heat here to the chat. All right, let's jump in now to Will Smith. If you haven't subscribed already to the page, take a second, go subscribe, please. Helps us out and we're trying to get to 30K. We're trying to get to 50K by the end of July, which I think we're a little behind on. So if you haven't, then uh, go subscribe, please. All right. So stuff's happening in the Will Smith case. Some of it legal, some of it not. We're going to talk through some of the things that are happening that I find interesting. We'll talk about some of the best um, conspiracy theories coming from it. And then, of course, we'll talk about a lot of the legal crossover still that could come forward on this case. Um, we all have talked through and argued about whether it's real, whether it's fake, whatever it may be. But there are some very interesting aspects of this case that still leave people wondering. Um, you all gave me videos in the last uh, video that we did. You put in the chat, hey, go watch the video. Will Smith slaps a reporter. Go watch the video when Will Smith was on Arsenio Hall and made a bald joke. Well, I did that. I looked at all the links. <clears throat> I watched all of the videos. Um, and my four girls, I will get to the questions at the end and I will answer your questions. Um, and I watched all those videos and I agree with you. It does seem hypocritical. It doesn't seem like a great look for Will Smith. On Arsenio Hall, he clearly makes a bald joke to some guy in the audience. Same exact kind of setup. It was a different joke. Same exact kind of setup of Chris Rock making a joke to Jada Pinkett Smith. However, Will Smith, even in that video, says, come on, it was just a joke. So somebody may have given him a look or something for the joke he made on Arsenio Hall, and he says, come on, it's just a joke. Similarly to Chris Rock doing that when Will Smith got upset about the G.I.J. joke. Now, on the other hand, Will Smith slapping the reporter, I didn't think was quite as horrible as some people were making it sound in the chat. It's not great whenever you put hands on people, but I do think the reporter took it too far physically hugging and kissing on Will Smith when he didn't want it to. And it was just a little tap. It wasn't a full swing slap across the face like he did to Chris Rock. Although not a good look if you have other bad acts in your history like Will Smith slapping somebody else then it's not good when you slap somebody on national TV, okay? So the next part is people commenting about what's happening. And you have comedians like Jim Carrey coming out saying he would sue Will Smith for hundreds of millions of dollars. We cannot set this precedent. It's bad for comedians, bad for comedy clubs, bad for award shows. All the things we mentioned in our very first video the morning we had it, reacting to what happened last night before anybody else was talking about it, Everybody seems to be on the same page, which I think is really interesting, is all these people do not want the precedent to be set and it to be a bad precedent. Um, a lot of actors, especially comedians, are coming out saying we don't want the floodgates to open for people thinking they can just walk on stage. Same thing with streakers or people running on to fields. They get tackled by security for a reason. We want to protect the people that are working. You know, the athletes, the NFL, NBA guys are there working on the field or the court. We don't want them to get injured. Chris Rock was working on stage. And we don't want him to get injured and have to worry about that or deal with that. Um, Joe Rogan made a good point. For all the people that are standing up for Will Smith saying, yeah, he stood up for his wife. He's really willing to stick his neck out on the line and do whatever it takes to defend his wife. Joe Rogan said, in reality, Will Smith got up, slapped the guy that was smaller than him, knowing security wasn't going to do anything, knowing he wasn't going to get thrown out, knowing he wasn't going to get arrested. So what did he really risk going on stage and slapping Chris, Chris Rock? which is an interesting thought. Did he really risk something defending his wife? If this was in the back of a dark alley and somebody said something to his wife, would he have done the same thing when there was real consequences on the line? Interesting. Just interesting to hear these different perspectives, people breaking down what they think and feel about this situation. Now, 
when we get to some of the conspiracy theories, because a lot of people are still out there saying it's fake. I've had people come in the comments and say, I'll stop watching your channel or listening to your channel. If even 1% of you thinks this was fake, only a fool would think this was fake. Okay, then call me a fool if you'd like. 1% of you. I still think it was real. I absolutely think it was real. And I think some of the stuff we're going to talk about after about what happened backstage and what the Academy is doing now absolutely makes me think that this is real. But if you watch the different angles of this video, and I think Michael Rappaport posted a video of Jada Pinkett Smith right after the slap happened, she laughed. Right after the slap happened, if you watch Will Smith as he turned around to walk away, it looks like he's smirking or laughing. Will Smith, as everybody's already pointed out, was clearly laughing when the joke was first told. And not until the keep my wife's name out your effing mouth was screamed multiple times and Chris Rock responded with bro, it was a G.I. Jane joke. Not until there did it kind of feel like, no, this is actually real. And I do believe it's real. I absolutely believe it was real. But I think that there are some things, some ang angles, some camera angles and videos that are make me think like this doesn't all make sense and it doesn't all add up. And people are actually using the legal crossover now as an additional point to this conspiracy theory. And I'll kind of explain it to you as somebody explained it to me when they asked me. So we've already heard Chris Rock is not pressing charges. And it's been confirmed that in California, actually, the state attorney does have discretion to press charges without the victim, although they don't likely or they don't often do it. It doesn't seem like they're going to do it in this case. So. One of the reasons Chris Rock might not be pressing criminal charges is because it was a hoax. And he and I'm not saying this is me. I'm saying this is the conspiracy theory. It's because it was a hoax and he does not want to find himself in literally the same position as Jesse Smollett. Everybody's on his sign right now. But if he calls the cops, says it was a hoax, and Will Smith said, you know what? Cat's out of the bag. This was all fake. We did it for publicity or whatever we wanted to do it for. Now Chris Rock could have criminal charges coming against him. He doesn't want to open himself up to get Jesse Smolleted. And so that's why he hasn't pressed charges or, um, you know, gone after him criminally or civilly gone after Will Smith. Okay. Once again, I don't believe that. I don't agree with that. I think it's an interesting conspiracy theory. Um, I actually think the real reason Chris Rock is not pressing charges is because he doesn't want to seem petty. He doesn't want to seem like an opportunist. He doesn't want to seem like a jerk. He's trying to take the high road. He's trying to be the bigger man. He's trying to, you know, he hasn't come out and said, there was a fake apology that came out from Chris Rock saying, sorry for what I said. I really apologize. I didn't mean to hurt feelings. So he hasn't really done anything like that, which I think is a good move for Chris Rock at this point because he was doing his job. He made a joke. Did the joke cross the line? Maybe. Should he not have said it? Maybe. That's something that could have been handled afterwards. Um, he did not deserve to get struck in the face. I think most of us can agree with that. So I think the real reason he hasn't pressed any charges or gone after him is he doesn't want the hassle. He doesn't want the backlash. He doesn't want people calling him a cupcake or soft or things like that. Like big deal. You got slapped because you talked about a man's wife. He didn't want all of that. Um, he wanted to take the high road. That's why I think he's not pressing criminal or civil charges at this point. Mel, I don't think he should apologize. That's my point. Other people have said he would and a fake apology came out. So there have been reports about the Academy stepping in. So what can the Academy do legally speaking and how could it maybe solve this problem that a lot of society is having with Will Smith is not getting punished for what he did like anybody else would, and we think he should be punished for this. So the Academy first came out and said they told Will Smith to leave, uh, to leave, and he was very aggressive and refused to leave. Well, now multiple sources are saying that they had multiple meetings. Somebody came out and told Will that the consensus was, and what we all decided is that we want you to stay. So he ended up staying and he won the award and gave the tearful speech and got a huge platform and more time than anybody else that one got to got to speak. So the Academy comes out and says they have to leave. Now it turns out, well, maybe that wasn't true. So the Academy is taking another step now and saying that they are going to do a few things. And I'm going to read them as kind of a list. First, they have officially condemned Will Smith's behavior. Second, they are now citing their bylaws and opening an investigation as to the appropriate action for Will Smith, not punishment, but the appropriate action. The investigation will take a few weeks. They ask for respect during the process, and it's going to be an expedient and respectful process that they run. They will explore future, and this is a comment from someone in the academy, not actually an official statement from them, but they said, 
According to them, they will explore further action and consequences in accordance with their bylaws and standard of conduct and California law. So we know he violated California law. It's either assault or battery, depending on what you want to charge it under. Technically, it could probably fit into both um, statutes. And those charges or those penalties for under California law, what Will Smith did, could be a fine somewhere between one and two thousand dollars, and up to six months in jail. Now, the six months in jail would never happen for a first-time offender or anything like that. But those are the punishments we're looking for. So what do we think? And let me know in the comments. What do you think the Academy will actually do as a consequence or punishment to Will Smith? Because it seems like they're our only option at this point. It doesn't seem like Chris Rock is going to sue them. It doesn't seem like law enforcement is going to do anything because Chris Rock doesn't want to press criminal charges and they're not likely to do it without cooperation from the victim. What do you think the Academy will do? I don't even know what they can do, to be honest. I guess they could take away the award, ban him from future awards. But what do you think they would do? And what do you think would be fair for the Academy to do to Will Smith as a consequence and a response for the behavior that they have now condemned publicly? They're condemning his behavior before doing this very thorough investigation. So I think it's a really interesting take that the Academy is stepping up and they're going to try to do something because at this point they seem like the only governing body that can do that can have some consequence for Will Smith. What else has the Academy done? Well, they have issued an apology to Chris Rock. Mr. Rock, we apologize to you for what you experienced on our stage and thank you for your resilience in that moment. We also apologize to our nominees, guests, and viewers for what transpired during what should have been a celebratory event. So they are apologizing. They are agreeing they had some wrongdoing in this. So people have asked the question, could Chris Rock sue them for not protecting him? Workers' compensation, he was working and got injured. And while it's true that workers' compensation covers any injury that you suffer at work, whether it's your fault, your employer's fault, or someone else's fault, work comp will cover that. Your employer has to qualify. They have to have work comp insurance. And also you have to be an employee most of the time. And most likely, Chris Rock, independent contractor type of deal, wouldn't be covered under work comp. So that's neither here nor there, but it was a legal question, so I wanted to answer it. However, he would potentially have a civil cause of action for some kind of negligent security where he could sue for the damage of an injury for being slapped in the face, but also some kind of loss of future earnings. If now he doesn't ever want to do another Academy Award or any award show because he's in fear for this, or he just doesn't feel safe, or he's embarrassed now because of what happened to him on national TV, because they didn't step in and provide enough security to not allow another man to walk on stage and slap him in the face. So he would potentially have a civil cause of action against the Academy. They even agreed it's their stage and it's their duty to protect the people on their stage. Now, will he do that? Probably not. Seems like he's not going to do anything like that. Seems like eventually he's going to make some kind of statement, probably take the high road again in his statement. Um, and then this will all kind of pass by and, and, and be done. So, more legal, civil, and criminal implications could happen, but it seems like at this point it's going to come down to the Academy. So that's what's happened kind of this week on Will Smith. We've got a couple videos on it. People seem to be interested in it. If you have any questions about this Will Smith saga, put it in the comments now, and I'm going to get to all the questions. I'm also going to read what you guys think the Academy should do or could do um, as far as a punishment for Will Smith, but I'll take one more second to make um, a quick announcement. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. And immediately following this live, our interview with Curtis Reeves' lawyers, Rick Escobar and Dino Michaels, is going to run. Immediately following this live, right around 3.30, that video is going to run. And it was a really fun conversation. They had some very colorful words to describe the prosecutor. I believe one of them said they had a robot up there as a prosecutor. Um, they also had some thoughts on the judge. Um, they talked about wh which witnesses they think went well and which ones didn't. And you learn a lot about what it's like to be a criminal defense lawyer in this type of case. They also talked about how much this defense costed. 
and it is an astronomically high amount, although not surprising based on multiple trials and appeals and eight years of work going into this case. So it's a really interesting interview. If you have time after this live is over, stick around for that interview. But for now, let's get into the comments and answer some Will Smith questions. I know there was one at the beginning that said, oh, nobody's answering my question, so I'm going to try to answer it. My four girls. No one is answering my question. Can Chris sue the Oscars because I know he can sue Will? Didn't I tell you I'd answer it? Yes, I think there is a way that he can sue the Academy. Um, and I just explained it all, so no need to go into it again, my four girls. Hopefully you enjoy that answer. Chris said this lap was real and totally unexpected. I haven't seen any comments from him specifically that have been confirmed from him. But if so, that doesn't, that doesn't surprise me. All right, the Academy should take away his Oscar. Um, I can't read what that says. Yeah, Mr. Turn It Up, this is interesting. I've seen people get slapped so hard they lost consciousness. If Chris Rock would have lost consciousness, I think Will would have been arrested or charged. So you think it's based on the severity of the injury that occurred. It's not uncommon that that's why they make some charging decisions as law enforcement officers or state attorneys based on the injuries. Um, however, it, again, talking about the Curtis Reeves trial, which that interview is dropping right after this, those doctors testified that hits to the head for certain people can cause serious bodily injury or even death. Uh, Will Smith's not a small guy. They asked him to leave. He refused. Then they gave him the Oscar. Yeah, actually, it's come out almost confirmed that they're backtracking, asking him to leave, saying some people um, that work for the Academy wanted him to leave. But the consensus and the answer ended up being they wanted him to stay. Some people saying no way it was not. There's no way it was fake. Other people in the chat said it was fake. I'll see if I can... Uh, Show it. Brianna, install a fence around the stage. I mean, if you think about concerts, they'll put up those fences sometimes so you can get really close, but not close enough. But that's the whole point. You're supposed to be among brethren here. You know, you're all famous actors and actresses. You should be able to trust people like Will Smith sitting in the front row with no fence in front of him. But obviously we can't. Pretty crazy. Some people say it was staged. Most people think it was not staged. And I agree. I don't think it was staged. Okay, so Betty Smith saying Chris Rock was asked directly from the Academy if it was real and unexpected, and he said yes. If Chris said it was real, then it was real. I agree with you 100%. I have not seen that, but I agree with you 100%. And see, even the Academy thought it was fake at first, which is interesting, or that it could be fake. Being violent as a host is bad business. That's correct. That's Jesse Smollett. All right, let's see. And I agree, Joy, I think it was a sucker slap is what I would call it. Um, he was not ready for it, hands behind his back. Probably thought Will Smith was going to come up and do something that was a joke. He probably thought if you asked him, you just made fun of Will Smith's wife. He's coming up on stage. Do you think he's more likely to hug you or slap you? He probably would have said hug you. Correct, Brianna. Yeah, so I had some guy that was in law school or, or a California lawyer say, oh, that never happens. That's impossible. Blah. It's not true. I've read up on it and it seems like, and I don't want to guarantee because I'm not a California lawyer, but it seems like just like in every jurisdiction, the state attorney can press charges without the victim's cooperation or without the victim wanting to press charges. Now, does that mean they always do? No, it's very difficult to prosecute a case if the witness is not going to cooperate. You can understand why, especially if that witness is the victim, but that does not mean they don't have a legal right to, to actually press charges. Seems very unlikely in this case just like what one of the other comments was, doesn't seem worth it because of the injuries to, to really do that. The Academy should revoke Will's Oscar. Yeah, Bodie, it takes weeks to do that. That's kind of one, one of my thoughts too, is we have video of the entire event. They already discussed it with a bunch of people backstage, but they need to take a few more weeks to make this determination, but hey, they want respect during this process, so I'm gonna give them respect. Hopefully you will too, Bodhi. 
Yeah, we'll see, Don. We'll see what the Academy actually does. So Butterfly thought he should have been physically removed. I agree. I think that would have been the best to at least something happen. Maybe he's embarrassed a little bit, whatever. Physically remove that man from the Academy Awards for slapping another man, send him home, and then figure out what to do in the future as to whether you don't want to let him come back or get the award. Joy thinks he should lose his membership. They should ban him. I had a buddy tell me today, Martina, yeah, they're going to stand behind Will Smith up until the last minute. The Academy blows with the wind. They're going to stand up for Will Smith till the last minute. Then if people stop going to his movies, then they'll stand up against him and be righteous and condemn him and ban him from the Academy, but not while he's one of their top earners. Teresa McFadden, McFadden, send him to live with his auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I agree. Maybe that's what will happen. Yeah, Mr. Turner of the Party, who would those be less credible if turns out to be a hoax, Will Smith or Chris Rock? Definitely Will Smith because he's the one doing most of the talking in the public, just like Jesse Smollett. Chris Rock hasn't really said much. They can take away his wallet. I mean his wallet. <laughs> they can take away his Oscar um, in perpetuity. Take the uh, award back or mark it in some way, kind of like Reggie Bush's Heisman that they took away. And then now we have NIL, so they're allowed to pay players. Doesn't make any sense. Dude deserve the Heisman as much as anybody, if not more. Let's see here. Betty Smith also thinks he shouldn't be able to go to the next Academy Award. Sammy needs an alibi. Take away the Oscar. Give it to Rock for courage under distress. That's interesting. Um, and kick him out of the Academy and Actors Union. Southern Sass, they may do something, but it's probably not going to be enough in the public eye. Katie doesn't think the Academy will do anything. So it seems like the consensus here in the chat is take the award back, ban him from at least one more, one future next year Academy Awards. Um, that's what it seems like the consensus is. And some other people think he should just be totally kicked out altogether. Yes, he's strong. Fake slap awards nobody. Watches political sports better. Be careful also. I don't know what the rest of that means, but fake slap. At least some people still think it was fake. Yeah, Callie Dunn. And sorry that our security left you to dry. Exactly. I mean, how annoyed would you be? I'd be so annoyed. All the security you know they have there. The DA should at least require anger management and psych evil. I feel sad for Smith. He needs to address this psychologically. Yes, Don. Reeves lawyers coming up next. Yeah, I see some some stuff about the weird relationship between Will and Jada. I'm going to stay away from that, although I've watched some videos on it, and it seems weird. Strong thinks there should be some kind of bail, probation. I don't think there's going to be anything like that because I don't think law enforcement is going to step in. Yeah, again, Mel, not only did they not protect Chris Rock, but they also wanted Will Smith to stay, according to reports. Uh, Martin Jordan, how can the Academy be held liable? They did nothing wrong. Sometimes doing nothing at all is wrong, especially when you have a duty to do something like protect the people you put on stage to work and pay to do their job, and then you allow somebody to come on stage and slap them. They could potentially be held liable for that. There should be zero tolerance. If it was fake, it was the best acting job ever. B Bean, it's never going to happen, brother or sister. Never going to happen. All right. Yeah, proportion. I agree, Strong. He didn't, you know, knock him out. He didn't close fist punch him in the face. It was bad, 
but prison is not something that we're talking about in this situation. But I do think people are mentioning anger management or probation or fines or community service. That would be great. It's not going to happen, but I think that's fair for what happened, for what he did. <laughs> My four girls, he should let Rock slap him back on national television. Interesting. B. Bean, have you ever been mistaken for the actor in The Passion of the Christ? Jim Caviezel is his name. And what's really interesting about the answer is no, although I can see it. Um, and I tell people when they ask me, they tell me I've, I've got the Jesus haircut now. I say, just trying to be more like him on the inside and out. Um, but interesting fact about Jim Caviezel, who did play Jesus with brown eyes, obviously, because Jesus was more Middle Eastern than um, anything else. Uh, Jim Caviezel has blue eyes, which I do not. Um, and he played in that movie Angel Eyes, which his blue eyes were made famous for, and they had to put brown contacts in. I don't know why. I just thought that was a fun fact. Let's see what else we got. Interesting, Joy. So Joy kind of has two comments. What do you think about folks serving up last offenders? I think which meant serving up past offenders. Um, Mel Gibson, Robin Polanski, Harvey Weinstein. Should they lose their Oscar if Will does? That's a really interesting comment about what we want to do as a society. We award these people. We look up to these people. They're icons. Um, they're idols for some people. Do we want to punish everybody that's done anything bad in their life and disregard the art that they made or the good that they made? I think that's not a legal question for me to answer. I think that's more of a societal question that the chat will be a better microcosm of what we all think about that as a society than just me. Yeah, annoy, annoy. If I did this at work, I'd be kicked out immediately and they'd probably call the cops on you. Donating money to a nonprofit would be good. So a lot of people saying like they think he was already angry with Jada and all that stuff kind of climbed up to that. So that will end our segment on Will Smith. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed talking about this topic. If more stuff happens, I think there's enough interest um, where we'll keep bringing content on w Will Smith in the future. If anything else comes out that has a legal angle to it, I don't really need to do the gossip conspiracy theories very much more. But if there are legal aspects to it, I'll be happy to jump in. If the Academy does come down with punishment, we can kind of compare it to what legal punishment would have looked like. And I think that'll be fun. So thank you all for your input on the Will Smith situation. But now is the time in the video where we do more of an AMA. Ask me any kind of question you want. It can still be about Will Smith. It can be about other cases. Um, and I'll answer as many of questions as I can over the next five or 10 minutes. Before we get to the Curtis Reeves lawyer interview, stick around for that because it is really interesting. And I want your comments and questions in the comments because I can reach out to them anytime, talk to them, ask them questions that you guys have um, if there are more questions. They were able to be a lot more open and talk more specifically about the trial than Crystal was because there's no appeal, obviously, in that trial because they won. And Crystal is still dealing with appeal. That's probably going to include an effective assistance of counsel. So it was a little bit different. Yes, Don, we are not done yet. Ryan Good, would you ever consider posting more lives and videos on podcast apps? I love listening to them at work. So we do a ton of videos. Some of them we do put out on podcast form as well. Um, I don't know if we've found the exact sweet spot of which ones do well on podcasts versus just leaving them at videos. Um, but... Yes. The answer is yes. We will po post more on podcasts just for you. And I will look into with my uh, marketing coordinator how to do that. And we'll just put more out there. And who cares if not as many people listen to them on podcasts? We've already created the content. We might as well take the audio, put it on podcasts for people like you who just like listening at work. Augustine or Augustine, I do not know what my sign is. I have no idea. Why did you pick FSU over UF? So 
Lots of reasons. Can I just say that it's better? Um, the actual reason, okay, the God's honest hand on the Bible reason is my dad went to Florida State double grad. I grew up just living for Florida State football on Saturdays, crying when we lost, celebrating when we won as a kid. We went to games. My birthday every year, we'd go up Tallahassee, go to games. Um, I take my kids now. And that's really why it was like bread in me. And it's the only place I wanted to go. I applied to one college and one law school, got in, didn't care about anything else. Um, it's the only place I wanted to go. So that's why I chose uh, FSU. And I loved it. I love going back and going back as often as I can. I have a place there. Got a lot of friends there. Um, live, I've only lived there and the Tampa Bay area my whole life. There's only two places I've ever lived, Tallahassee and here. Riley, if I'm in a deposition, I have an NDA. Can I break it? And can the company come after me? That depends on what the NDA is. I can't give specific legal advice in these answers. If you guys have any real legal questions in Florida or elsewhere in America, um, email us at lawyer, you know, at gmail.com. And we can actually talk. I've talked to over the last month or two, a ton of people have been emailing in and calling in. Now I can't always get to them immediately, but I almost always get to the questions that you have. If I can provide an answer or help either by email or setting up a call or having my office set up a call. So I have gotten in touch with a ton of you. So I appreciate you calling. It's been really fun. We've signed some cases from subscribers that watch and have just found us on YouTube, which is really fun and cool because it feels like we already kind of know each other and have a relationship, which is fun. Um, but generally speaking with NDAs, they have to have teeth. And if you have an NDA that says you can't disclose this stuff and it's a civil lawsuit, usually you can't violate that NDA without the permission of your employer or whoever had you sign that NDA. But certain NDAs have no teeth at all. Like sign this NDA before you can come to my house and you can never talk about what happens in my house. You sign that NDA, but there's no teeth. And what are they going to do to you if you actually do talk about what happened in their house? Sometimes you can get around an NDA like that and it doesn't matter. But if there are trade secrets or some way you make them lose money by violating your NDA, then they could probably come after you and sue you for those damages. So it's not a good idea to ever violate an NDA. If you do feel like you have to in some kind of case, then ask a lawyer before you do. Detroit made, when are you joining the panel of lawyers on Rakita? I think it would be a good opposing viewpoint. I don't think it's ever going to happen at this point. I've said for months and months, I would, I would love to, it would be fun. We've reached out to him. We've had a couple emails back and forth and he never asked me to come on. So for whatever reason, never been invited on. I've never said no. I wouldn't say no. Cause I don't, I, I don't really, you say it would be an opposing viewpoint. So I don't really know what his viewpoint would be on any of these topics. I don't know which topic you're talking about, but I like disagreeing. I think it's fun for conversation, but Never been asked on, so it is what it is. That dream is fading, so it seems, for some of the subscribers here that keep asking for uh, me to go on his panel. But he's a big shot. I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little channel compared to him. So make sure you subscribe and get us to 30K. Um, let's see here. Grump Texas, when and how often do you do live shows on YouTube? I usually do one a week on Friday. The time I try to do it either at noon or 4 p.m. Eastern time. Today is different because I'm practicing and I have a full caseload. My schedule is really different every week. So I'm doing my best to do one live stream a week and we post a video every single day. So we take time to record these videos and kind of set them up to where they come out every single day. So we're providing content, having fun, doing as many cases as we can. And a couple of the lawyers in the firm all do different cases and different videos. So we try to have fun with it. Um, that, that's really the goal of it. I'm not sure if I'm on Rumble or anything else. I don't think that I am. Um, I don't control all of it, though, because um, I have some people that help me with the channel as well. I agree. Green Beagle podcasts are awesome. I listen to them all the time, too, when I'm driving. If I'm hitting range balls, um, I have them in my you know ears and just kind of listen to podcasts. Most of them are sports or legal type podcasts. Podcasts we hear. So we do have podcasts um, on it's called SoundCloud and Apple Podcast, Lawyer You Know, or Peter's Proffer was the old name, but Lawyer You Know, I think is what they're all under now. So we do have a bunch of podcasts on there. Most of them are Theranos and Sonny Balwani stuff recently, but we have a ton, and I mean a ton, hundreds of legal topics that we did podcasts on. We answer specific legal questions. So go check them out because I actually think they were really good. And they were back where before we did YouTube, before we had any videos at all, we did a ton of legal topics, and I think you guys would enjoy them. I'm guessing you're a Libra. I'm not sure. Joy, thank you. I love comments like this. 
You and your partner, Peter, great. Enjoy your channel. Haven't watched your dad yet, but you are the types of attorneys I respect. Thank you. That's our goal, honestly. That's our goal. We like to have fun with it, but we're not going to be embarrassing and we're real lawyers and we want to keep it that way. Um, and people always ask me, do you think this is going to come back to bite you if a judge sees another lawyer sees it? No. Everything I say, I would say to a judge, I would say to another lawyer. I've had these conversations with judges and lawyers and it's fun. It's fun to get a different opinion from just the the public at large, which is what you guys are, the potential jury pool. That's what I really like as far as the people that come and content, con, comment and give me their point of view and their opinion. That's what makes it so fun. Oscar D, why is there such a delay between the end of case and sentencing? Using Holmes as an example, not all cases, but some of them do. And that's if they need to do a huge sentencing report, a pre-sentence investigation, and the defense, usually private defense um, firms take longer through sentencing than public defenders, get a ton of people to write letters, come testify on behalf of the defendant. They really try to mitigate that sentence because our work is not done just because we lose the trial. A lot of times we can get a lot of work done and do a lot of good for the client in the sentencing phase. And that's why sometimes it takes a little bit longer. What do you recommend doing in the Tampa Bay area? I've always wanted to visit. Well, you have the fun stuff like Bush Gardens and Adventure Island. If you like theme parks, Clearwater Beach is the best beach. Um, so definitely check that out. The aquarium is pretty cool in Tampa. Um, I have two little kids. So a lot of what I do uh, revolves around them, which as you can tell when I talk about theme parks and museums, um, a lot of good restaurants in downtown, the Columbia, downtown Tampa, where it was original is a uh, uh, great restaurant. So I would recommend that. I mean, there's a ton of great restaurants if you like expensive steakhouses. There's a couple really great steakhouses. Um, and it's known for some other things I don't do um, in Tampa as well. Um, if you're here on a bachelor party or something like that. My birthday is in October. I'm going with Taurus. I don't know what any of this means. I don't know if these are compliments or not. I've done the Enneagram and strength finders tests and stuff like that, but never my sign. Nika, does the DA need to show evidence at a probable cause hearing? Troy Driver case in Naomi, iron kidnapping evidence not given to the public, defense not adhering. I'm not sure what case you're, you're talking about, but yes, they do have to present evidence at a probable cause hearing. Sometimes it can just be testimony, um, but sometimes it can be physical evidence as well. Grove, Texas, subscribe and we'll continue listening. Enjoy this live. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Love everybody that subscribes and I'd love for you guys to let me know if you do subscribe during a live and I will shout you out and appreciate the subscription because that's what's fun. You know, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe and it makes you hopefully show up more, get more in the comments and more in the conversation. That's what's really fun. Thank you. Glad you made it here, Mr. Carter or Miss Carter. Thank you, Green Beagle. Libras are all about justice and balancing the scales. Interesting. A cancer. Is that the answer, Michelle? Let's see here. Did you ever meet Bobby Bowden? Yes, I did. I've got some signed footballs by him. I met him a couple times, as great as you could ever imagine. I actually have a picture signed by Bobby Bowden and Steve Spurrier. Um, and it's like a, a Seminole Indian fighting a gator with a spear. And then I have two smaller pictures in my man cave of them. It's a picture of Bobby Bowden signing the picture and a picture of Steve Spurrier signing the picture. And then I also have the big signed picture. So it's kind of a cool little thing with Bowden and Spurrier. As Peggy, you should do a collab with Emily Baker. She's a former prosecutor and I would love to see your different Vion criminal cases. Would love to. There's nobody really I say no to that's another lawyer that wants to talk legal on a podcast. Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate it. I'm not sure people care what I have to say about the NFL. All right, let's see here. I did tell you my birthday, October. The date, uh, October 16th is the actual date. Brianna says, you can't disagree with Rakita and expect to be on a show. I don't know. Here we go. Here's our podcast page. Awesome. Thank you, Annoy Annoy. The goal is reached. We hit 30K. Doesn't mean you have to stop. 
What's your favorite album band type of music? So generally I'm a Dave Matthews, John Mayer kind of guy. That's my favorite type of music. And recently I love Surfaces. Um, and I've got like a connection to them because his, the main singer Forrest Frank of Surfaces, um, his brother-in-law and I are really good friends. I love him and I know his sister well as well. Um, and so it makes me love him even more. As far back as you can remember, did you always want to be a lawyer? Not necessarily. Um, I wanted to be a doctor at first, went to, to school, majored in biology, and then switched and ended up going to law school instead of medical school. Sammy, October 15th. Well, glad you asked, brother. We're almost the same day. Um, okay, then you must be a Libra. Okay, Libra, I guess is what it is. So a defendant in a criminal case will always show up. I mean, they can waive their appearance technically, but it's it's very rare that that would happen. In a civil case, defendants don't show up all the time. Butterfly. I was actually a Brady fan all the way. I'm a, I played quarterback in high school. was always a wannabe quarterback. So I love quarterbacks. Always been a Bucs fan. So when Brady – actually, when Jameis Winston came to the Bucs, I was like tugging at my heartstrings because he's one of my favorite FSU players of all time, then coming to my NFL team. When Brady came, same thing, one of my favorite NFL quarterbacks of all time. Um, coming to my hometown team. So I love Brady and Gronk as well. How can you not like Gronk? Subscribe ages ago. Good. Now that would be cool, Ryan. That would be cool. I'm a Bucks fan, Lightning fan, Orlando Magic fan, and Tampa Bay Rays fan. All right. I think I have to go because that interview may have already started a minute ago. Um, so I'm going to go now. This was fun. Thank you, everybody. The AMA at the end was awesome. If you guys got into it and I didn't answer your question, please come back because I want to get to it. And that stuff's really fun. And, and we did it for like 15 minutes today, which is longer than we usually do. So please come back next week, do some AMA stuff. Let's answer some questions and talk more about that stuff. It was fun. But for now, I'm going to jump off this live, stick around for the Curtis Reeves lawyer interviews. It was really cool. See you guys.